Okay, so we need to make a mug really fast. Obviously, the first thing we need to do is create the mug container itself with the cavity. So let's go ahead and hop into Blender and then add in a circle. I'm gonna just go into the mode with tab, fill in that circle and extrude it up. Why I didn't use a cylinder? Uh, before we do anything with that extrude, let's actually go back into object mode and then let's put in a subdivision surface or a subsurf. You can do this very quickly with control one through five. I'm gonna do control three, put a level three subsurf on that and then go back into edit mode to create that cavity. At the top, I'm gonna do a I key to inset and just shrink that down just a little bit, enough space to give it a good wall for that container. And then real quick, I'm gonna do an inset on the bottom as well. And then I'm gonna do an alt click on the side of that ring, select in the entire ring, and then do a extrude twice. That's gonna give us the base of the mug, that little unglazed ceramic. You know what I'm talking about, look at any mug. And then I'm gonna go back up to the top and extrude that downwards to create that inner cavity. You can see that the top is pinched and the cavity is curved. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a loop cut with Control R. What that will do is allow me to slide that closer to the top to give it more of a plateau look than a pinch. I'm going to do that on the inside of the container as well. And then I'm going to do a second one on the inside of the container, but bring this downwards to the bottom of the cavity. Once we have that, the container model is complete. I'm going to really quick give it a material. So I'm gonna, over in the properties, click the little red checkerboard circle, hit new, and expand the timeline up and switch that over to the shader editor. In the shader editor, I'm gonna turn it black, but not pure black, we don't want pure black. And the ceramic of the mug is actually not very reflective. So I'm gonna turn the specular down and turn up the roughness. The way we're gonna get the shininess of the mug is through the clear coat. So it will properly mimic the glaze on the outside of the mug, reflect in light, but on the inside it diffuses. I'm gonna then back out and start creating our handle as a separate object. I'm gonna add in a cube, put it off to the side, Skinny it up with S and then X to just squeeze it on that X axis only. And we're going to create the foot of the handle. You know how there's always a big section and then it goes and tapers off into a skinny section. I'm going to just extrude this and scale it down to give it a good taper off upwards. And then we can start extruding the hold of the handle itself. Instead of doing a extrude and then move and rotate, which is hard to keep the right volume, I'm gonna use a feature where you right click and hold control at the same time to just extrude and rotate where you click. It's a lot more natural of a flow, but is also much quicker to get a long string of extrudes. So I'm gonna take a basic shape, maybe edit it a little bit, I can always refine it later. 
And then in order to get the next foot, I'm actually going to cheat a little. I'm going to go into wireframe with Z and then select the foot of the handle, shift D to duplicate, move it down, and then do a R to rotate, lock it on the Y axis by pressing Y, and type on the keyboard 180 to do 180 degrees. And then I'll just move it into position, go to the face of the hold that is down at the bottom, press X and delete face to get rid of that inside face. And then I'm gonna select the ring by holding Alt around the edge of the hold and the edge of the foot. And then by doing Control E to open the edge menu, I can easily do bridge and it just bridges between those for us. And that's the handle. But we wanna make sure it actually properly sticks to the side. So we're gonna use a shrink wrap modifier. But before we do that, we wanna to go to the green triangle, which is the data section in the properties, and then assign a vertex group to only the bottom face of each foot. And then we can go over to the blue wrench to add a modifier, deform, and shrink wrap. We're gonna select the container we made as the object, and you can see it's all smushed up against the object now. But at the bottom, you see vertex group. So now we can just tell it to do only that vertex group. So the handle remains in the shape we want it, and then only the bottom of the feet are pressed up against it. I'm actually gonna do an offset to push it a little bit past that geometry. And don't forget to give the handle the same material as your mug. And you can alter the shape. Like here, I'm just giving it more of a handle droop gravity feel. And also I scale it out in the X direction just because I felt it was too thin. But after that, it's simple. Press render with F12. <laughs> Hmm, perfect. Oh! Ah. <laughs> <sighs> huh? Sheep it. Sheep it is a completely free render farm. They're not actually sponsoring us. But they are really good friends. We even hosted them on our Discord for a small little period until they got too big and I had to kick them out. What is Sheepit? It's a karma-based rendering system. You can use it entirely for free, but by rendering and volunteering your own machine to render other people's projects, your projects can render faster. It's super simple to set up. In Blender, you want to make sure to package all images and textures into your Blend file, save it, head over to Sheepit's website, and then just upload. If it's an animation, you tell it what frames to render, and you just have to wait for others to render each frame. It's a little bit faster than rendering on your own, because multiple people can render a frame at the same time. There's even been moments where I've had a... 500 frame animation render within an hour because there was just a massive amount of people that decided to help out and render. Go ahead and follow the link in the description below to you know, find out more about Sheepit. I also want to take the time of letting you know, as per the channel name, we are a Discord, so if you're not in the Blender Discord, go ahead and go in the description below and Locate the link to your invite to join the community of tens of thousands of Blender artists. It help from other people or help out other people. Your choice. I especially want to thank the three crazy people who have continued to give me money for no apparent reason. Seriously, 
I've given them nothing for the five dollars they've spent for the past few months to me. But if you want to join this list of awesome people, you can see it in our Discord server shop. Have a good day!